So should you invest in the Qualtrics IPO? In this video, we're going to do a deep dive into the viability of this business. We're going to talk about their growth, their acceleration, their market share. We're also going to talk about the overarching ecosystem. What is it that they actually do? Who are their clients? In this video, we're going to go into all of that. Let's get started. If we were to take a little step back here, there's an overarching ecosystem of software that supports companies and Qualtrics falls into what's called VOC, Voice of Customer. Any software solution that lets the customer relay their experience to the company kind of in their own words is considered a VOC software. And there are other players in this space. There is Opinion Lab, 4C. So basically Qualtrics is a piece of software that allows companies to solicit survey responses from their end users. These tools are able to gather things like NPS, which stands for Net Promoter Score, which answers the question of how likely is a customer to recommend a particular product to a friend or colleague? And it's represented as a question one through nine, and then the company ends up with a percentage NPS score. Similarly, there's things like Customer Effort Score, which helps companies understand how easy their product is to use. And then once a company has this score, they know who their promoters are, they know who their detractors are. And this is actually very valuable because if you think about something like a mobile application, mobile apps want reviews. And oftentimes as you use the application, they'll solicit you for a review. Have you ever seen that window alert that says, uh, would you like to leave a review? Well, savvy app companies specifically trigger that alert at a emotional high point usually just when you've succeeded to do something, right? Well, if the company can figure out if you're a promoter or a detractor, they can strategically solicit reviews from people they know who are gonna give them a positive review, and that system can be gamed a little bit. So this is valuable. An interesting case study was McDonald's actually introduced the all-day breakfast menu based on feedback from customers, and this resulted in a 5.7% increase in 2015 fourth quarter earnings for same store locations. One of the other things that's interesting to note, amongst Qualtrics' huge number of clientele is Google. And it's surprising to me that Google would outsource something like survey responses. You don't think of survey responses as particularly technical. And yet, they're using Qualtrics in many cases to solicit this feedback. This sort of data is usually referred to as qualitative data. And that differs from quantitative data. Quantitative data might be something like Google Analytics, where you'd be able to see page hits, page views, checkouts, add to carts, things like that. Qualitative data is more subjective. It's where you ask maybe an open-ended question to your customers. Questions like, did you find everything you were looking for? Was this useful? Was this helpful? These questions are a little bit more open-ended and subjective, and the responses will be freeform. So one of the things Qualtrics is uniquely positioned to do is take that freeform text and run text processing on it. The biggest threat, in my opinion, to something like Qualtrics is if you look at the software, it's not overly technical. Um, it's survey software. And of course, there are layers of analysis on top of that. And then there's scaling and deployment. And there is a lot of added tech to it, but it's not something that is a huge technical hurdle. So if you think about the iterative nature of product development and take a company like Netflix, this is an application that we all use. Well, sometimes the user interface is clumsy, things are not clear. Sometimes there are technical glitches where it just flat out doesn't work, you can't log in, etc. It's really valuable to these companies to have a channel where customers can say, hey, I was experiencing this particular issue. And then the company in question, Netflix in this case, would take that survey response, kind of run it up the flagpole, have the development team and the product team address that, and then improve their product. And this is a kind of a virtuous cycle that a lot of the major tech companies are falling into. This is how the FANG companies essentially are able to continually streamline their software 
software and make it better and better. And clearly, the sentiment behind a particular brand and the experience that customers have with that brand can be really critical. If you think about a company like Zappos, this is one of the pillars of their company. In fact, the founder had a book called Delivering Happiness. They had that anecdote that went viral where someone called their customer service representative and asked to order a pizza and the guy actually ordered the pizza for them. They had outstanding customer service. And the result for that company was they ended up getting acquired by Amazon, which is kind of the pinnacle of success for startup founders. So there's the customer experience, which is usually referred to as CX, but there's also the employee experience. So you take a big company that has 70,000 employees, they have internal software that is only being used by their own employees. Well, that software needs to follow the same sort of iterative improvement cycle. So these tools are actually being used internally to solicit feedback from employees. So this is a really, really powerful component as companies iterate and improve and learn. So what happened was in 2018, SAP, which is more of a conglomerate, ended up buying Qualtrics for $8 billion cash, which is an amazing exit for a startup. It's not exactly clear to me why they're spinning it off into an IPO right now. I'm sure there's just something behind the economic model by which it makes more sense. So in summary, I've seen no red flags with this company. They're in a space that is growing rapidly. They have huge clients. The underarching premise is solid. The fundamentals are solid. It's a B2B tech company, which they tend to do better than the B2C companies. So I think all the signs are, are pretty healthy. So if you found this video useful, go ahead and hit that like button. And thanks for listening.